superior math students think visually. For example, if a student is given this equation, the square of a plus b is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, many students would proceed to memorizing this formula. Well, there's no problem with that if you are only memorizing one formula. But if you are given a bunch of formulas like this, let's say we have 22 formulas containing letters A and B, chances are you would be very confused. Now, if you approach math visually, this formula would look like this. You have a square, the side length of the square is A plus B, and the square is broken down into four parts. You have this pink square, the area of that is A squared. Then you have this smaller yellow square with an area of B squared. And you have two rectangles, each with an area of A times B. So connecting that with our formula, this exponent two, which we read as squared, means you have a square. In the square has a side length of A plus B, which is now this A plus B here, A plus B here. That is equal to these four distinct parts. The first part is this pink square with an area of A squared. The other part is this yellow square with an area of B squared. And then you have two rectangles with an area of AB. And so AB plus AB is equal to 2AB. So if you look at this formula in terms of visualization like this, you would come to realize that this equation talks about a universal truth about space. And since much of engineering deals with computations in space, then this formula we know would be very crucial in the fields of engineering. Now, let's say we are given this formula. The plus sign is now changed with minus sign and your teacher says you are going to change this also to minus sign. Well, you can remember that, but why is that so? So let's look at the visualization again. Again, we start with a square with a side length of A units. So A times A is A squared. That is the area of the screen square. Now, since here, the side length of the square is A minus B, that means we are going to subtract some quantity of magnitude b from this side length of a and let's do that so this is now our result the a minus b squared would now be this blue square the length of this blue square is a deducted by this b so this square of a minus b therefore talks about the area of this blue square and looking at now the composition of our squares and rectangles here here is what we found the square of a minus b that means the area of this blue square can now be computed this way you start with a green square with an area of a squared but we are going to deduct the area of this rectangle which is minus a b and the area also of this other rectangle at the bottom which is again negative a b but wait a minute notice that we counted this area twice because that's already computed in the first rectangle and that's computed again in the second rectangle. So we need to return back this part that was counted twice. And so we need to add that part that was subtracted twice. And we now have this plus b squared. And simplifying this, we arrive at a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, which is now this right side of the equation. Now, a better way of looking at this is you can see how these components are interrelated. You can see that this part was indeed counted twice. So if we remove that, we now have this figure. Now here's another idea. According to research, 7% of communication is in the form of words and the rest in the form of voice and nonverbal communication. So if you are the student that rely heavily on memorizing in words these formulas, you are missing a lot of opportunities to be at par with the more superior students using math visualization. Now the good thing about mathematics is that once you establish that something is true, then you can just use the concept of substitution to apply the formula in specific instances. For example, in this formula, it doesn't matter whether I use A or B or I use letters X or Y. If I replace A by X and B by Y, then this formula is still true. In fact, I can even replace this A by a binomial X plus 2 and still the formula applies and that becomes like this. Notice that this part is just substitution. I did not perform any computations. I just apply the formula by substituting this x plus 2 to a and only in this last two steps when I perform some minor computation 
to come up with the final answer. So contrary to most belief, math is not just about computation. Math is a way of thinking. Math is the language of the universe. And if you think of mathematics just as purely computation, you are thinking of math as just arithmetic. And computers can perform these tasks much better than human beings. So in mathematics, we are not so much about computation. We are after learning this universal truth about the universe that's stated in mathematical language.